Are you are you able to read one of the practices to begin? Or if not, it's fine. Go for it. I'm just going to name practice five act together because I think that that's the practice that we're especially called into um, at this time in our lives and at this time in history. I'll just name practice five act together. Okay. I'm going to start. Good morning, friends. Please step into my life with me. You're with me. It's 6 a.m. It's Wednesday morning, November 2nd, 2016. And I am stunned and shocked as I walk into my usual coffee shop. My country actually elected Trump to be president. And I'm ordering my coffee and my face is crumbling and my voice is breaking. And I apologize to Liz, the barista that I know, as I order my coffee. Don't apologize, she said, I feel the same way. Not long after, I had what came to be called a Trump mirror, which is what it sounds like. For me, it was a dream of quiet, paralyzing terror with this intense threat hanging in the air. And I shook myself awake and I tried to go back to sleep and the dream immediately restarted. It would be a year after that day, after the election in 2016, before I would discover EcoFaith at the autumn 2017 retreat. And that was where I met Robin and Solve and Chris, who had been in EcoFaith for some time. It was the first time I met Scott, who was new to eco new to EcoFaith like me. And I got to learn about the seven practices. And I had found my tribe. And I am bonded with this tribe, EcoFaith. Intensely grateful. That was the story of me. And this is going into us now. Since 2016, and enduring a Trump presidency during COVID, I suggest that we, as a tribe, and Marilyn and Frank, you're part of this tribe, been activists with you since way back in the day. I think we've experienced some post-traumatic growth as progressives, as eco-faithers, and post-traumatic growth is a thing. Some people and groups become stronger and more cohesive through trauma, more wise, more, more able to summon strength and to act together. And sadly, some people in groups who go through trauma don't. So that's post-traumatic growth. Portland Clean Energy Fund campaign in 2018, in which EcoFaith acted together with many different nonprofits. To me, that can serve as an example of post-traumatic growth. For one thing, we won. But more important than the fact that that progressive, humane, I would even call it a Christ-centered initiative, it won in the Portland um, election polls. It was an example of acting together, not just as eco faithers, but with many different groups, including people of color. And let's note that Lenny D, a veteran community organizer, and Brent Foster, an environmental attorney and a veteran activist, they were instrumental in forming PSEF and getting it passed. Let's just note that. We'll be looping back to it later. I'm introducing today, friends, the concept of pre-traumatic growth, which is also a thing not as well known as post-traumatic growth. It means that we can strengthen ourselves in advance of a hard thing. And we are looking at a hard thing. Being mentally and strategically prepared to act together, not just as individuals, but together instead of being as stunned and off balance and flat-footed as I was on November 2nd, 2016. Moving now into now. That was self and us. Now, here is why we need pre-traumatic growth, friends. A week ago, I heard Dahlia Lithwick speak at the Alberta Rose Theater. And she is uh, an attorney, a JD. She's a veteran journalist expert on national politics. And in particular, she's an expert on the Supreme Court. And boy, is she smart and energetic, um, articulate. 
And she told us many things. I learned a great deal, but here was my key takeaway that I've shared with a few of you in the room. It is highly probable, she says, that however people vote this coming election day, probably the Supreme Court will end up deciding the outcome of the presidential election as happened in 2000. Voter suppression is more organized and rampant now, and Trump's lawyers are organized and prepared this time to argue all kinds of lies, which they were not organized in that way four years ago. And believe me, I would love for her to be completely wrong. She would love to be wrong. All of us would love to be wrong. But my gut says that she's right. And incidentally, when I talked with Brent Foster yesterday, the veteran I mentioned, he thinks that she's right. So let's take a breath. Um, I've had a week at this point to digest the implications of that scenario emotionally. And most of you have not had an opportunity yet to sort of just take that in. And so later on in our meeting in practice five, I'm going to talk about the phone chats that I had just yesterday with Lenny D, veteran organizer, with Brent Foster, veteran activist, environmental attorney. And for right now, I'm going to um, let the tension sit here. We're all sitting in tension. We're all postcarding. As I talked about with one of you, I think that postcarding, as good as it is, I think it's entry-level activism. I think that God calls us um, into more, especially in times like these. I look forward to our one-to-ones, and I look forward to our discussion after the one-to-ones. That's what I have for you today, dear friends. Thank you, Alice.